Hello again and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. And today we're going to be wrapping up the filtering of our continuous form. So I'm going to go back into our Access database. And now what we need to do with this combo box that we added is that we need to give it some values for the user to select. And then we need to have it return back a value that we can filter the entire form by. So I'm going to select the text box here, and I'm going to go over here to the Data tab. And remember how when we did the address type, we had a control source for it. And that's because we were wanting to record what the user selected into the table or into the query. And in this case, we don't really want to do that because we're not recording what the user selects in any way. We just want to basically filter the form by what the user selects. So instead, I'm just going to do a row source here. And I'm going to click on the ellipsis, and that's going to open our query builder. And this is just going to be a select query, which you should be used to by now, as you've seen me go through it a couple of times. And I'm going to go ahead and add the table one customers table. And I'm going to close that. And just like with our address type, I've got to add the ID so that we have a unique field a unique value that's going to be returned that helps us identify what the customer is. And then I'm going to put in the customer name so that we have an easily identifiable text, you know, text name for the user to select from. I'm also going to give it a sort of ascending on the customer name. That way the combo box is going to give us an alphabetical list of the customers. And that's going to make it a lot easier for the user to look for the customer that they want and select it from our drop-down box. So I'm going to save that and go back to our form. And there's a couple of other things I need to do here to this combo box. The first thing is I need to change the name of the combo box from combo 47 to something a little bit more identifiable. So I'm going to change it to CBO customer. And then I'm going to go over to the format and I'm going to change the column count to 2 and the column widths to 0 and 1 just like we did with the address type. Okay. Now the reason I changed the name to CBO customer is because at some point we're going to need to reference the value that comes back from this field. And if it's named just combo 47 or whatever, that's not really distinctive. That doesn't really tell me, you know, it's not very easy to identify that that's the one that I'm looking for. So I'm going to save this information. I'm going to save the changes. I'm going to go ahead and view it and just make sure that it looks how I want it to. And sure enough, alphabetically listed, and we don't see the, the ID value. We just see the name of the, co of the company here. And clearly, obviously, if I select here, it's not doing any filtering yet. We've got a lot of work to do here still to make that happen. But we're definitely well on our way. All right, so now what I need to do is now that I have a combo box that's going to be returning a value, I've got to change the source, the record source, of the whole form to filter based upon what the user selects here. Okay, so I'm going to go into the record source, which is just basically our, our query cust address with type. And you'll notice that I'm missing the customer ID from this query. Remember, the combo box is returning a customer ID as a value. So in order for me to filter this query by the customer ID, I've got to somehow get it in here as one of the fields that we can use to filter it by. So I'm going to back out of here. And if you remember, the query, the query cust address with type, is based upon the subquery query customer addresses. And that is where we actually need to go to first put in our customer ID. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to double click on customer ID. And we'll see customer ID is now there as one of the fields that is returned from, for this query. I'm going to save that, close it. And then you'll see that the cust customer ID is still missing from our query customer addresses. That's because we've got to close out of this query and reopen it, and now it'll show the customer ID. So I'm going to double click on that, and now it's been added to our query. 
So I'm going to save that query. And now, remember, since the record source for our form is bound to a query, and I just made some modifications to it, in order for those modifications to show up for the form, I've got to close out of the form and reopen it. It's just one of those odd little quirks of access. All right, now if I open this up, you can see, remember, I added customer ID to this query, so now it shows up as one of the fields in our query. But I don't necessarily need to show it. I could, I could take this off. Show just basically means return it as a value. I don't really need it. I'm going to go ahead and leave it unchecked. But we are going to filter this query based upon the customer ID. And remember, the customer ID we want to filter it by is the one returned by the combo box. And luckily for us, Access gives us a very easy, simple way to give that combo box value as, a, as the value to filter our query by. So I'm going to right click on this box here for our criteria and we get this option called build. I'm going to click on build and we get this nice expression builder that helps us get, you know, create some sort of value to filter the customer ID by. And you'll see down here we have our database that we're working on, Service Inc. I'm going to drill down to the forms of our database here and there's the loaded forms section which gives us all the forms that we currently have loaded into our screen and form customer addresses is one of them. I'm going to click on that and now we have that CBO customer combo box that I just recently renamed. That's the combo box that we're looking for. If I double click on it, that now will basically return the value from the combo box back to the query for us. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now you can see we're going to filter the customer underscore ID by what we get from forms, form customer addresses, combo customer. Okay? Now I'm going to save that, close it, and then I'm going to view our form. And you'll see that right now we still are lacking some functionality. But let's say I pick Smiles Incorporated. Okay? Then I go to Design View and go to view, we don't really get our results yet. And you're probably wondering, well, why are we not getting the results that we want? What we're going to have to do is do a little bit of VBA code, okay? Because essentially what's happening here is that this record source is only applied to the form when the form opens, okay? It only is applied when the form is opened. In order for us to make this query that we just modified apply after we change the, that combo box, we need to add something called an event handler. And we will get much more into event handlers when we cover VBA uh, coming up here pretty soon. But for right now, just know that we've got to go to the event tab. And on after update, I'm going to click on the ellipsis, go to the code builder, and I'm going to type this in, me.requery, and that's it. I'm going to save it, and now we should get the functionality we're looking for. See that? Hamster Wheels Inc. gives us the filtered list of our addresses for that particular customer.